Good morning everybody. A um, couple of days later and I've removed the retarder from the van. I didn't film taking it out mainly because this thing is damn heavy um, and I need to concentrate on not hurting itself. But I did what I said I would do. I disconnected the four bolts that go through these rubber support bushes because it was easier to unbolt those than it was to undo these simply because I think these may actually be uh, slotted to allow a slight alignment of the retarder so I want to keep that the same. You'll also notice there's a hole. I've removed the faulty core which I will show you shortly but very briefly 19mm bolt retains the shoe plate which I'll show you in a minute. These are the shims here there's a couple there and the thrust washer they're the shims that um, space the plate out from the shoe plate, uh, space the uh, rotor out from the shoe plate. Very, very thick. These are really, really thick, heavy duty cables um, running around inside. Um, but that's the internals. This is the <coughs> forward facing part of the vehicle, this is the rear of the vehicle. I'll now just spin it round so you can see the uh, other part. So this is the uh, part that goes to the differential. These fittings here are where the connector block goes. These are the three pairs of wires. Um, I've marked them all up so I know which one they go, but they're so rigid they pretty much hold their own position. That's the earthing bolt for the uh, supply. You'll notice new screws. I just happen to have these uh, laying around. The screws that hold the individual coils, or the cores of the individual coils on, I had to drill every single one out except for one. Um, and the reason I decided to do that, because it was pretty much um, <laughs> shit or bust at that point, was because two of them had actually already sheared off. And looking at the state of the heads, right here's one of them. So there's the horrible they're M8 bolts with an, a 5mm capped head. So you've got a lot of thread and a lot of torque going through a horrible fitting. And you can see that's hollow. At least I think you can see it's hollow. Maybe not. Anyway, this one's sheared off. You can see it's fairly rusty, so it's been off for a while. There was two like that. When I actually took the rotors off by undoing that centre bolt that just slides off and shot on splines, um, two of these things fell off. Not good. Um, maybe somebody's been at them before, but I wouldn't have left the heads there because they were going to get caught up. But the shims prevent this thing from scraping. This rotor was touchy very very slightly very very slightly you'll see I've marked it this is just alignment for the um, prop shaft and also so I knew how uh, exactly to get it back in the same place and splice this one is currently rotating nicely I've shimmed it out I've used a couple of shims from the other side and I've ordered some shims on eBay because the the manufacturer's shim kit $130 for half a dozen washers stupid money uh, they're nothing fancy, they're just standard um, steel shims, uh, varying sizes, and I've ordered a bag full on eBay <laughs> to do the other side, but I've used what, um, what was on the other side to shim this out, so the air gap all the way around now is a millimetre, give or take, there are some high spots on this, there's no distortion or anything, the plates at the bottom just seem slightly more proud, um, but that's pretty much how the um, rotor actually bolts on, single bolt, there's a, a tab washer there that you just bend over and it secures it, I ought to buy another one but uh, they've got one side they didn't use so I use that. Right let's spin it back around again and we'll talk about the other side which is the business end. That gives a better view of the internals. So all the main cables go down this side here. Um, it's worth noting that the coils are polarised, 
one north, one south. Two south, so it's two north that's failed. Three north, three south. And they're actually wired up um, differently as well. So the positive supply coming from the six contacts down here um, goes to the negative of this coil, the positive of this coil, the negative of this coil, the positive of this coil, which is why you can see I flagged it red, the negative of this coil, the positive of this coil, and that basically um, swaps the direction of the magnetism. Uh, I'm guessing maybe they're trying not to magnetise the, the plates or something like that. But they are wired up, it's not all the reds going to the 12 volts coming in, it's not all the blacks going to the 2, and there's actually two uh, connections there, so it made it quite easy to isolate which of the coils have failed, because I could isolate the returns and just do resistance checks to work out whether it was... No I knew it was one of either 2 south or 2 north, because that's the one that was, goes to pin 2, which had the high resistance, I just needed to work out which one it was. I've chopped the cables off, tagged them, need to get a new coil. And uh, fortunately, the coils have just visible down there part numbers. Unfortunately, the part numbers I haven't found online. <laughs> These are dated 2010. It's a bit weird, but all the online documentation I found seems to relate to the retarders that are sort of 10 years or several years earlier, so the, the part numbers are different. Even on the side of this, the manufacturer's part number is on this side here. Is it there? Or there? No? Yep. The manufacturer's part number is on this side here, and this one is numbered 271122. I haven't found a 271122 everywhere. I've found a 211122 and a 23, um, and that's all the uh, documentation I've found, but not a 27. So this is a slightly later unit. Um, the 27 is just a sequence. It means it's a, a, a 35 newton meter retarder. The the one in the sequence means it's 12 volts and the final three digits, one, two, two, are the um, configuration for the rotors that connect to the drive shafts. You obviously can, these are designed to fit multiple vehicles so they need a different type of coupling and the, the final thing is just a coupling index. So the part numbers, are, they're not 100% interchangeable. Um, you, know, you do need the right parts for the right vehicle. So, next thing to show you, where is it? It's over there, pause. So that's the rotor. It looks like a dirty great disc brake, but effectively, it is a similar sort of construction. It's a, um, a cast iron or an iron rotor that can be retained by electromagnet. Not much more to say about that. Um, oh yes, the indexing thing. Flip it over. There you go. So, that plate bolted onto the rotor with five bolts has got four uh, studs coming from it. They, they, are, they are the correct uh, spacing for the drive shafts and the sprinter. So that plate there, that small round plate there, that's the item that they um, provide for individual vehicle types and that's what creates the unique part number for the overall retarder for a given vehicle. So that's um, the rotor. This is the shoe plate. This is the uh, inside shoe of the shoe plate. One thing that I have noticed is that they're very rusty because obviously this is this because obviously the the, um, the core of the coils and these have to be a ferrous metal, they go rusty. I've actually scraped them out and cleaned them all up, um, otherwise they wouldn't bolt up properly, I don't think, so I've, there was quite a bit of delamination in places here, especially at the lower side, before it gets wetter. Um, same for the, the actual surfaces of the coils, I've given them a good clean up. These two are, uh, look blacker, that's because they're still soaking, soaked in oil. These two, out of all the ones I had to drill out, and I had to drill every single one out of these, except for one. Um, of the heads, rather, to, to get them off. Ironically, once I drilled the heads off, when I actually took the thing apart, I was able to, by hand, unscrew some of these. The heads had actually rusted into the shoe plate, not necessarily into this. But these two, these were rusted solid, and I've drilled these out and uh, cleaned them both up with a tap. I've been very lucky. Uh, I, 
I didn't expect to actually be able to manage it. Um, ironically, <laughs> the score that's busted, that unscrew that I did have to drill that way. I mean, it would be brilliant if these had been fine and that one was wrecked because I wouldn't have had to waste my time. Right, let's have a look at this shoe plate. Slip it over. Right, so there it is. Let's pop it up there. Zoom out if I zoomed in, yeah. So, this shoe plate is held on by. This shoe plate is held on by 15 screws in total. Six go into the cores of each coil, and uh, the remainder actually hold it onto the aluminium casting of the retarder itself. They are all M8 cap screws with a 5mm head. The reason I couldn't get them undone from around here because the head's just chewed up. The, head, the heads were rusted in into these poles and I tried heat, I, I've got a, a fairly feeble impact hammer uh, driver. Um, I tried no oil in them, uh, penetrating oil. They weren't going anywhere and the heads were rounded off. But the good thing about a cap screw is because you've got a hole in the centre you, actually, you can actually get a, a good drill through it. So I drilled them all out and I was very lucky the vast majority came out of the uh, threaded portion of the coils. Um, you can see some remnants in this hole here. That's actually the remainder of the head where the where it had come off for some reason. You can also see extensive scraping. This is the source of my noise. This one on this side was not shimmed enough. Or there's been some distortion of this plate and this is bowed out. But there was quite a lot of scraping. And once I've actually got the shim kit in place, I will get rid of all my horrible noises. I've actually filed off the edges here. The rotor doesn't actually fully cover all of it. Where it was in rubbing, it actually had dug in a groove, maybe a quarter of a millimetre. So I've just I've just filed these off down the bottom here. And on both sides, it was rubbing more at the bottom than at the top. On the other side as well, there was some very, very slight rubbing, but not enough to be hardly be noticeable just it was almost in contact so it definitely needs shimming out on both sides so this exercise of taking this off to do this it's worthwhile even if I can't get out of a call and then I think the last thing to show you if I can reach it oh crikey that's heavy it's all heavy every oops cable all of this stuff is heavy there's the coil I mean, that weighs a good few pounds on its own. Um, they've got a rubber or a foam uh, washer at one end to cushion it, but the coil itself, you can see, it's trapped between these two shoe plates on both sides and they're bolted up. Um, the coil is ever, he ever so heavy duty wire it winding, looks like it's aluminium, um, they're crimped, you can't solder it, and it's held in place with large blobs of uh, silicon, black silicon goo. You can actually see it everywhere inside there. There's blobs all over the place. Not 100% necessary because obviously once it's, it's bolted between these two plates it's not going anywhere but it's very very well constructed and I spent quite a, you know, quite a happy time cutting through this to get it out. Um, but there you go. That's the status at the moment. If I can't get a coil I will put it back in the hole just to actually give provide a bolting service so that we don't get any distortion in the plate. There's potential distortion. And I will run this thing just on the five coils, um, or even four. Um, if I, I, I will change the wiring so that um, stage three becomes stage two. They're all exactly the same, physically the same coils. It won't make any difference. Um, you know, stage one are those two. Stage two would normally be these two. I'll just change the wiring so it's these. I mean, they're still in proximity. It's just they're in different proximity. You know, it's these ones instead of these ones for stage two. I potentially could wire that up as stage three, just the one coil. But I think that's probably not sensible. I think there's there's so much energy in these. I could probably end up distorting and causing some scraping. 
So I think I'll write this two stage, assuming I can't get a new call. Um, with a bit of luck, I will. And uh, if anybody knows, or if anybody has one of these lying around, with that part number, which is the part number of the core, VD310680, in their garage, let me know, because I could do with the call. <laughs> Whoops. Thanks for watching. Stop wobbling about, camera.